what I've done is opened up this image of a skull inside of Illustrator. I'm using a skull because skulls have a very rough texture and therefore you can kind of just screw around with the lines and have some fun with it and no matter what it's still going to kind of look good. <laughs> if you're working with say, uh, I don't know, a female, then obviously you're going to want much more simple lines, much smoother, uh, far less lines. It really depends upon the artwork that you're working on, what kind of lines you want to go for. Just kind of play around and have some fun with it. But let's get this set up. What I'll usually do whenever I'm starting off an artwork is in Illustrator, the brush tool doesn't really have a whole lot of variation in the sizes or the tips. So you want to blow up your image you know, fairly large and since you're in Illustrator then you can have it huge and it's not going to slow down your machine much. But once you've got it large then you'll want to first select your brush tool of course and you'll want to open the artistic uh, actually these are the wrong ones let me open up the right brushes if you go over the brush palette right here and then click on this kinda like Photoshop and then go down to your brush library and then artistic and then pull up the artistic calligraphic brushes and then once you've clicked on this your brush is actually in this panel you can double click on it and get the brush settings now over here you'll notice that it's sort of like Photoshop where you've got these drop downs and can select different things of course you're going to want to turn it to pressure and the variation you're going to want to turn up that's how you're going to notice the pressure sensitivity notice that this one's like that would be equal to pressing very lightly pressing normal and then pressing hard I want just a little bit more variation and now let's see if this looks right yeah, so so. Yeah, I actually want a little bit more variation than that. So I'll double click it again. Let's take it up to eight. There we go. Now you can really see the variation in it. see what I mean it kinda automatically smooths out the line for you and that really helps now the reason why inking is such a great thing to do is because you're basically tracing and outlining stuff and it will allow you to build up speed and technique with your Wacom tablet so it's a great way to train It'll help you build up accuracy and a lot of other things. And that line was horrible. But I've actually already outlined this skull. So let me show you the end results. Let me zoom out. All right. That was my final result using pen pressure. I did another one without the pen pressure so that you can see the difference. That one's without pen pressure. And that one's with. See how the lines just look much more clean cut and this just looks more like something you would see in a comic book or in a tattoo parlor or something like that. Which by the way that's another reason I really like vector art is because if your work is good enough, you can start a membership on a site like Shuttershock.com and upload your uh, vector images. And if people download them, then you'll make some money on the side. So it's a good way to build up your portfolio and skill and also make a little bit of extra money. Also, another really cool thing that you can do is once you have all the lines made, one thing that Illustrator can do that Photoshop can is all of this is still completely vector meaning it's not rasterized, it's actually computer data saying that this point is here and this point is here and this point is here. So in Illustrator you have the ability to change your brush or change the line after it's already been drawn. So you could select all of this, open up your artistic uh, brushes and then click on something like this, give it a second to load,
there's a lot of lines it has to calculate. And now you've got a very grungy look. Obviously there's a lot of little artifacts and things that you know you can't always account for. It's always best to use the brush that you want to end it with, but still there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this. You could even change the size of them, say I wanted them bigger. Let's try and make them a two point. This is going to get a lot more artifacts, but you'll see more of the grunge too. Look at that. That just looks evil. And then you can take this back into Photoshop and start coloring inside of it. Anyways, I hope this gets you started and enjoy painting.